Oh, ho, ho. welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a while, but I just couldn't, couldn't resist showing you guys these chairs. Look at that shit. It's got chairs. It's got chairs. It's got, it's got vintage airs. No, it's, it's actually got a different engine. But y'all didn't see that coming. Yes. That is not a V8 anymore. I know, I know. Um, this car's been through a lot, a lot of different motors. Uh, last time you saw it, yes, turbocharged V8, lots and lots of power. And too much power, honestly, honestly, maybe too much power. Um, but now it is something new. It is L28 with a surprise. <laughs> Um, not not stock as you can tell not stock um, I guess I could take it back to the beginning I could do a little story time here 1973 240z I bought it probably about 10 years ago now damn I'm an old man um, had a 2.4 with triple Weber's and a header I don't know maybe they did something else performance wise um, wasn't fast but when it was up above 4,000 RPM, you're like, okay, this is it's nice. This is feels a little sportier. Um, but yeah, not fast, not fast. Uh, then of course, fast forward had the 6.0 LY6 with cam headers, all that good stuff. That was fast. That was that was quite fast. Um, and then I had the red one, the 280 with the L28. That was not fast. <laughs> Put a V8 in that 5.3 with cam Then put a turbo on the V8 now I was actually trying to sell this car. I was like well first I was like all right Let me make it nice hence the nice seats the air conditioning all that Because I was gonna keep it and then you know shit changed life changes and I was like all right I'll sell the car. I'll sell the V8 I'll Try to get as much money back from it Of course after that the V8 versions went up a lot, but I digress and so as part of the selling I got this bad boy L28, um, hundred fifty horsepower, whatever, two hundred foot pounds of torque, supposedly. Nothing to, you know, impress anybody these days. Um, and I was like, all right, it'll be easy. I'll just stick it in there. I'll sell the car. It'll be a piece of cake. I'll be done in like a week. But of course, no. <laughs> this is supposedly running L28. Not running when I got it, and as you could tell, I might have removed some wires and some linkages and some fuel stuff when I had the V8 in it, so it was no longer going to be an easy job to put this in here. And so it became what you see now a how can I make this engine nice for the least amount of money? And that was I was going to do a whole series on, I was going to do the $1,000 L28 build, but. As you can see, it's been a long time. I don't make any money off YouTube. And I don't have Photoshop anymore. I'm not going to pay for that. So you get one video, maybe two, two videos. I'll give you two videos um, to show what I got and eventually the power and all that stuff. But L28, why did I do it? Why did I do those? Why did I before ignore it? Why am I trying to be cheap with it? Um, so like I said before, I had a 2.4 in there before, which I sold when I put the V8 and back then, so yeah, 10 years ago, I couldn't even get rid of the motor. Like I sold it. The only reason people wanted it was because I had the triple Weber's and basically they're like, all right, I'll just pay the triple Weber's price and the engine is free. And I was like, all right, fine. Just take the engine, I don't want it. There's no space for this engine. Um, and then with, I had the 77, which I'll just pretend it's here. Um, 280Z, I sold the L20 in that. I got 400 bucks. So always in the back of my mind, I was like, these motors are worth anywhere from zero <laughs> to $400. I will not, if I spend more than that amount of money on the engine, I have, I'm an idiot because that is, they will not fetch more than that. Um, then when I got this, I was like, oh, all right, let me see how much these are worth. And they've gone up a little bit, surprisingly, I guess there's none of them around, but say about a thousand dollars, let's say. Um, there was a guy selling an entire car for $300, but he was too far away with the engine and everything. Uh, but yes, so I was like, all right, for a thousand dollars, what can I do to this motor? Because then I won't feel like an idiot if I spend only a thousand. And spoiler alert, I went a little over that, but 
I knew that since I had removed all the factory, you know, wiring and stuff that it was supposed to have regulators, so I was like, all right, well, I have it all wired and ready for an LS. Let me see what in the LS world would work. And I was like, all right, I can do a lot of research, a lot of, a lot of research. It's been a lot of time. Let's just let's just get out of the way. Um, cheap. I did as cheap as I can, but in, <laughs> it's been so much freaking time. So much time. It wasn't worth it. Yes, it wasn't worth it. There you go. There's the spoiler. Um, but I was like, all right, maybe I'll just stick an LS engine management on here. And so did research. Yes, I could do a V8, uh, the V8 engine management, but you know, there's a couple things which are not so great about that. Um, you can, let's just say for the, for tuning, you can tr put it in six cylinder mode with a V8 OS and it will work in six cylinder mode. But for instance, I need a, you know, a cam sensor, um, and a crank sensor signal. That's the main thing you need to get to basically do this on any car. Um, but you know, the cam sensor on the LS is, of course, it's on the cam wheel inside the cam under the timing chain cover, and I didn't think that would be easy to use. And on top of it, it's got, you know, it's got um, coil packs on top, which they do actually sell, you know, a piece of kit to mount those. But, you know, I was like, all right, well, what else is out there? And then, you know, there's the, the GM six cylinder LS. Uh, we're using the LS computer, the you know the Vortex series. So this is off of a Vortex 4200, and I went with the 08 Plus because they have the better computer. That's the year they started using the E67, which, if you all are in the know, is basically E38, which is what's on an LS3. So I knew that that could work with anything I wanted to do, including a turbocharger, and so. I was like, all right, well, once I, since I have to do that computer stuff, how much would it be to just slap on a turbo? Because now that I have, would have modern engine management, you know, adding a turbo is literally nothing extra, just bolting a turbo on, right? And so I did that. Um, let's, let's, let's tally up some numbers. So 250 is what I paid to pull all the stuff off of that await trailblazer. So I got coil packs, I got injectors, I got computer, I got sensors, I got throttle body, I got uh, pedal assembly, I got all that stuff. I got alternator too, but I was hoping I could make this alternator work, but you know, the mounting brackets are quite different, so did not. Um, so that was 250. Uh, turbocharger, I spent 260 on it. I got the billet compressor T304E with the oiling kit and it's freaking amazing strange coincidence but the oil feed line that it came with is like an4 or something whatever that is and on the other side is like 18th bspt like who the hell uses bspt except this Datsun engine <laughs> ironically so I was like in the real world I don't know who would use it everything's NPT but it happened to be bspt which is the same thread as the oil pressure sensor thread this guy which goes on the side of the block so um, they sell a T for this so you can use them both but the one I ordered the dude had it mislabeled so it went back and I haven't bothered to replace it since so I'm just using that oil pressure sensor to feed the turbo um, and all that but yeah 260 ish for all that so we're up to 510 um, intercooler this is where I spent the most money honestly all these little silicon boots, silicon boot, math thing, silicon boot, pipe, silicon boot, silicon boot, um, pipe, silicon boot, all those things are like basically 20, 25 bucks each. So like $20, $20, $20. Do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So that's like $200 on piping. So that was ridiculous. Um, the blow off valve, I actually had this um, left over. But I think they're like 30 bucks. So let's say another 250. So you're about 750 for all that. And then I needed a fuel rail, um, you know, to run those. So this is Pro Tuners, Z Pro Tuners, whatever fuel rail. Um, that was 200 bucks. So that was kind of expensive. And that's including these little um, fuel injector adapter things. Um, on sale, I think it's cheaper. It's like 100. 
25 maybe for the two of them but yeah so that's 950 ish which doesn't leave much <laughs> uh to go so then there's of course some pipes i spent like 30 dollars on uh, crossover pipes uh i spent 100 dollars on a full exhaust three inch kit bend kit so that's um yeah, 130 we're we're like right over a thousand dollars at that so basically budget blown um because i had intended almost there it's just over a thousand bucks but what it ended up pushing me over was this header so i got um i was planning to use a stock one but my if you can tell my um stock one is, was like uh burnt out here so i tried to like fill it in flatten it all and stuff but this is cast iron and it was not welding. It was not welding. This thing was like melting like water when I tried to touch it. And plus, like, I don't know if you can see the ports in here, but they are literally disgusting. Like, I was like, man, this has got to be the worst flowing <laughs> manifold ever. Like, look at this. Like, look at that. It just like, the walls just like cave in on the port right away. It's like, why would they do that? So, I'd heard that the exhaust is like pretty restrictive on these, so I splurged and found the only header I could modify for this situation, and it was off from Australia, so I basically, it was like a $200 header, but it was like $200 shipping, so $400 um, for that, and that, of course, blew past the budget, um, so now we're at like $1,500, and then I got an upgraded clutch and fly wheel, which was like $160, bucks. so we're at like $1,650, which is... Now that I say it to myself, I'm like, shit, <laughs> it's a little bit much. But good news, guys. Um, all this is said and done. Um, this thing's actually fast. Like, um, I don't know how to get a dyno, but like right now, it's I still have to keep tuning it. Um, but it's running 6 PSI right now. Um, and just me, like, giving it, like, some throttle, like, at 4,000 RPM, it's throwing me in the chair. Like, it's it's... It feels like it's got like 300 horsepower at least, um, but the mass that the mass doesn't add up for that. Um, I guess it would add up about for the torque because if, if this was about 200 foot pounds torque stock, you know maybe this increased throttle body add a little power, the header add a little power. Almost seven psi. If you see about 50 percent more power, you would expect so about 300. So maybe, 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 but it ain't bad so far, um, except. Like, I remember why I hate old engines, like the gaskets, man. It's so bad. I got oil leaks I got to fix. But I digress. We'll get that. Um, we'll get. We'll find out on Dino soon enough. Um, but as you can see, I had to do a couple things, and that's where the time really, <laughs> really ate on me. Um, like, you might wonder what the hell I got going on with this header. Because um, that ain't no factory hitter so I'll show you basically if you were to get your own turbo header there's only like two people making them and they want like 800 bucks and they put the header they put the turbo like right here like like I'm talking about right here and you see this this is your brake you know proportioning valves whatever they are distribution block and like it's not a good place to have your header right here against your brakes, so not to mention about your intake. So um, I didn't like that, so I went for this crossover setup, and basically, uh, I, as you can see, it's a it's a three two one header, and I have it basically uh, wide together there. It's pretty bad to see. Uh, I apologize, but I had it wide together there. From two to one, it goes behind the oil pan, it goes up here, hugs the engine quite nicely, and then I bolt the turbo to it. I've got a couple, you know, um, little supports to hold it up and all. One back there, right here on the back of the block, I have one vertically to the oil pan. Um, maybe I'll add another. I mean, you can see it's it's pretty solid, but it's got like you can wiggle it a little bit. Probably hard to tell, but it's got like a tiny bit of wiggle, but not anything to worry about. 
Um, just cone, cone filter there. These coils, just a piece of aluminum, basically, and you can bolt it right to it. Crank trigger, that's, that's where things got interesting. Basically, I had to figure out how Chevy was um, running their computer system, and there's not any real documentation, but I had to figure out the trigger patterns for the cam. I had to find out the trigger pattern for the crank, and I had to basically find a wheel that worked. And the wheel I got down there is a Chevy 2.4 Ecotec wheel, which is somehow amazingly the absolute perfect size in every way. And at first I had it spot welded to it, but I don't know if that pulley's cast iron or what, but it was not sticking with shit. Like it would break off if you like smacked it. Super brittle. So it's got a little spot weld plus JB weld <laughs> slash JB weld equivalent. So basically, yeah, you're going to want to have to epoxy that as well as spot weld if you care. But I made a little adapter to hold that. So basically this was like a ring to center the um, wheel onto the crank um, bolt. And then of course I had to make this adapter here to adapt the stock um, manifold to the throttle body for the Vortec, which is quite a bit bigger. Um, I'm pretty happy with that one. Get about nice. Uh, and I ported the Ported the dots on the side a little bit to increase the flow there because I was like, well, since I'm making this adapter, I might as well widen up where it mates. Map sensor nicely fit basically exactly where the um, stock, whatever it is, like idle injector, cold start injector is. I just had to drill it out a little bit wider. And these bolt holes are the factory ones which were holding that down. Well, they're not the factory bolt holes, but different bolts, of course. Um, and then I did a couple things. I added this cooling mod to the cylinder six and five banks and all that and um heat heat wrap i got the heat shield i'm about to pull the head that's why i have the heat wrap off or the heat shield off but yeah, that's basically what i had to do to get it running and it runs pretty good um uh, next time i'll try to get a video of this on the dyno we'll find out how much it actually makes but um can you do can you take your l28 or L24, I guess, and make decent power on a budget. Uh, I would say no, you, you, <laughs> you are gonna have a hard time. Um, but since I already went ahead and did all the hard work for you, yes, now you can. Um, you can do it. I, you're gonna have to spend, there was a hidden cost in, like if, in the computer as you gotta tune it, but I have to tune files. So if anybody's interested, hit me up. I can provide you all the details. I can sell you the adapters. I can sell you a tune and make it real easy. So if you do that, then yes, it's, it's pretty freaking easy now. Um, you can use your stock manifold. Like if you have a like running engine, like this one, unfortunately, was like not in good shape when I got it. But if you have a nice engine, then yeah, you can just slap that turbo on. You can use your stock manifold. Um, get an intercooler, blah, blah, blah get this thing and yeah you can do it um but yeah uh, we'll find out just how much that's worth in horsepower when i get this sucker to dyno so look out for that video next